The removal of ichthians from the water is imminent. So let's recap very quickly. I am still in Isla Mirada, sitting inside the 35-foot Sport Fisherman's Solutions. I got here because Hookshot's co-host and my old buddy Captain Eric Kerber works here all winter, and this season I decided to take the 1,300-mile drive down from Jersey with him. Now the plan was to fish with all of our old friends between home and the Keys, and when we left off in the last episode... Already, we've caught some monster blue cats in Virginia, and we've caught some nice reds in South Carolina. So from South Carolina, we got about five hours before we crossed the Florida border. So as we're cruising through Georgia, I just happened to casually mention the curbs that my in-laws have a really sweet pad in Ponte Vedra, Florida. To which he replied, okay. But when I said there's also a really sweet private bass pond behind that house, I was like, okay, we can stop there. I mean, I'm kind of hungry. Hey, wipe your feet before you go in the house, bro. Absolutely the worst doorbell. Hi, Mom. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? So we barged in on my mother-in-law and immediately went to town destroying those hog Florida strain largemouth. Ooh. The old Yamamoto, baby Bashinko, baby. Getting it done on this monster. So we threw some flukes and Senkos, caught some monster bass, and uh, you know, it was a nice little break from, from the driving. We said our goodbyes and got back on the road to Port St. Lucie, Florida. And here's where things could have got really ugly. We were walking right into the lair of our friend Zach the Hammer Miller. They want anybody in these days, don't they? Whoa! And against our better judgment, we left the fishing plans for the next morning totally up to Zach. We gonna get a big old bucket of shrimps. Which with him means, good God, we could be doing any sort of thing like uh, shark fishing on a nude beach or paddling ladders around in kayaks. As it turns out, and luckily for us, the hammer is way more into big sea trout come winter time. So we said, all right, dude, we will follow your lead. It's legal for us to be parking here? Quasi legal. When we got in the water that morning, right at sunup, and it was dead flat calm, and there was bait popping around and fish swirling. I mean, it just, it felt so right. And about an hour and a half goes by and nobody is really scoring any bites and you're starting to wonder a little bit if this is gonna pan out. And just when you're sort of losing hope. Here we go, here trout, we go. Trout, trout, trout. Feels like a trout. Zach comes tight and he's like, trout, trout, trout. Watch out, watch out. Dude. So sure enough, man, it was a it was a nice gator trout, you know, 20, 20 plus inches, and, and that's what we were looking for. That was the target. But we waited a couple miles and that sun crept higher and higher and higher, and all we were really scoring was the occasional hit from a small jack or a small ladyfish. Now Zach, to his credit, he does not like live bait. He is an artificial kind of guy. Me, on the other hand, I was like, you know what? We bought those scrimps, give me one of those scrimps. So JC flings the shrimp under the dock and uh, you know, he hooks up and he was putting on a good fight. Like, okay, this is, this is something good, this is decent. Look at the cute little rat red. It's red tide now, baby. We are in them! So I roll up on another dock, another shrimp. Get him, get him. And boom, catches a small stuck. He might not be a monster, but this is just super fun ass fishing. Even though these weren't big giant fish, we just put the inshore slam together. And even though the fishing wasn't on fire, we were having so much fun just hanging out that Kerber and I truly didn't want to leave. But we only had 300 miles left to the Keys, and it's like we need to knock this out. It was fruitful in memories. The fish were few, but the memories were many. That's something like Flip Pallad would say, right? When you gotta deal with Fort Lauderdale traffic, you gotta deal with Miami traffic, just South Florida traffic in general, 
It can be a long 300 miles, but we were just pushing and pushing and pushing to get there. You know, when you finally get through Key Largo and you're like, ah, finally made it. Home for the winter. We made it, damn it. Feel good to be back. Home sweet home, baby. And now it's back to living on a boat again for three months. What's up, everybody? Plan on living on a boat for three months? Let me give you some pointers. Truth is, there's only three things to worry about when living on a boat for a long amount of time. You're gonna need beer to drink after a long day of fishing. Always make sure you're fully stocked on toilet paper. And most importantly, when you're pulling early hours like I am, coffee. But what you don't want is an old school glass coffee pot. It's a boat, people. The boat rocks. They fall, glass shatters. So thank God for the new Keurig I just picked up since the one from last year took a crack. It can fall over while I'm sail fishing, hit the deck while we're grouper fishing, and guaranteed I'll still be able to make a hot cup of coffee the next morning. Now if you're wondering why we're plugging Keurig so much in this spot, because these little K cups are mad expensive. So Keurig, if you're listening, I'll wrap this whole damn boat in your logo if you hook EK up. Any of you guys who follow our Facebook page have probably seen videos posted by our buddy Kevin Hughes. He also happens to live right in Miami, so we gave him a call and said, hey dude, if you're not doing anything tomorrow, by all means, come on down and run with us in the Keys. Welcome aboard, Kevin. You know, thanks for having me. So we fished with some great guides and great friends along the way, and they all came through. Now we're in the Keys, and it's all on my shoulders. So my plan was to do some snook fishing. And I thought, I'm gonna go straight to my confidence spot. Now, all you need to know is that my confidence spot is a 30 mile run from Isle Murata. So we're burning across Florida Bay and we're making great time, which afforded us to stop and hit one little cut spot that I like to if I have time. So Kevin and I start firing jigs, firing shrimp underneath the mangroves, and within three seconds, I tie into a fish. Now I could tell just by the way it was fighting, it was this little mangrove snapper. No big deal. As I'm fighting it, I look over my shoulder, Kevin comes tight, and his drag is singing. Nice, nice fish, dude. dude. So at this point, we're like, thank God we brought Kevin, because he kicked the day off with a real nice snook. So JC turns around, now I'm gonna put a plastic on. He flips in, boom, he's hooked up to a nice snook. There he is. Woo. Didn't stay button, though. Oh. So as that tide flips, we motor over to the real juice that we were out there for. Normally in this spot, a shrimp on a jig head is the way to go. So that's what I had Kevin and Joe throwing. Just to have an extra rod going, I decided to put a soft plastic on. So I'm flipping this fluke on a jig head thinking, yes, yeah, I don't know if this is gonna you know, work, and bang, I get hit. He's like, damn man, that's the second biggest snook I have ever caught in the Keys. Everglades line siders. You know, if there's a fish with a line on it, I love catching them, dude. So things are going pretty good, right? A few minutes later, Kevin swings tight again. Now when that one broke the surface, it was just a jack creval, but it's like, man, you know, we're bending rods here, we're doing what we came to do. Not a few minutes later, JC sticks another little snook. Now the tide was dropping, and as it got lower and lower, those bites were fewer and further between. So Kerber said, you know what? Let's shoot into Flamingo, we're gonna refuel the boat, and then we're gonna make the run back to Isla Mirada and fish closer to home. Well, surprise, surprise. Would you look at that nasty behind me? Luckily, we're going this way, Mom, so don't freak out. So for 30 miles, we hung right on the edge of this front with JC in my ear the whole way. I will fully admit that I was scared Kerber had that throttle pinned. And we safely slid back into the dock about 20 minutes before that front rolled in and all hell broke loose in terms of wind and rain. Kev, thanks for coming. Oh, I needed it, no problem. <laughs> yeah. That was a hell of a way to end it, wasn't it? It was like the fish gods were saying, we're gonna give you a couple fish and then you're done. You are cut off. You know, all in all with this trip, we it was a pretty big gamble. And I'll tell you, it was one of the most 
fun weeks I've had in a long time. And somehow, some way, despite it being January on the East Coast, we hit our targets from day one to the very end. I still like JC. Well, it's been fun, homie. Have a good winter. Hope I got you here in time, dude. I am legitimately sad to have to fly home. I'm gonna be back to being all alone, so I guess I'll just go drink Rum Runner. Eric, get the net, it's slippery, you little son of a Get the net, all right, you lost him. And that's gonna be the end of the episode. Besides the fish gods bending us over and here on the flats today. Okay, I'm gonna make you start over. All right. Oh, this time alone, Zach the Hammer Miller. I should have been thinking.